ever wondered what really happens inside your brain when you are depressed? This is not just about feeling sad. Depression physically changes your brain chemistry, alters brain structure, and rewires neural connections in ways that affect every part of your life. Today, we are breaking down the neuroscience of depression using 3D animation to show you exactly what happens in your hippocampus, prefrontal cortex, and amygdala when depression takes hold. And we will look at real statistics from the United States and Canada to understand the true scale of this mental health crisis. Depression in North America, the numbers. In the United States, over 21 million adults experienced at least one major depressive episode in the past year. That is nearly 8% of the entire adult population. In Canada, approximately 5% of Canadians age 15 and older reported symptoms of depression in recent surveys. But here's what most people do not realize. Depression is not just a mood disorder, it's a brain disorder. And understanding the science behind depression can help reduce stigma, encourage people to seek help, and remind us all that mental health matters and treatment works. What happens to brain chemistry during depression? Let me start with the most important part, neurotransmitters. These are chemical messengers that allow neurons in your brain to communicate with each other. When you're depressed, the levels of key neurotransmitters drop dramatically. The first one is serotonin. Serotonin regulates mood, sleep, appetite, and emotional stability. In depression, serotonin levels fall, and this leads to persistent sadness, irritability, sleep disturbances, and loss of interest in activities you once enjoyed. The second neurotransmitter is dopamine. Dopamine controls motivation, pleasure, and your brain's reward system. When dopamine levels drop, you lose the ability to feel pleasure. This condition is called anhedonia. You stop enjoying things that used to make you happy. Your motivation disappears. You feel emotionally numb. The third neurotransmitter is norepinephrine. Norepinephrine regulates alertness, energy, and your ability to handle stress. Low levels of norepinephrine cause fatigue, difficulty concentrating, and an inability to cope with daily challenges. So when all three of these neurotransmitters drop at the same time, your brain chemistry becomes severely imbalanced, and this imbalance is what creates the symptoms of depression. Low mood, lack of energy, poor focus, and emotional numbness. How depression changes brain structure. But depression doesn't just affect brain chemistry, it also changes the physical structure of your brain. And this is where the neuroscience gets even more fascinating. Let me show you three key brain regions that are physically altered by depression. First, the hippocampus. The hippocampus is responsible for memory formation and emotional regulation. Research shows that chronic depression causes the hippocampus to shrink. Brain imaging studies from universities across the United States and Canada have confirmed that people with long-term depression have a smaller hippocampus compared to healthy individuals. Why does this happen? High levels of the stress hormone cortisol damage neurons in the hippocampus. Over time, this leads to memory problems, difficulty learning new information, and trouble regulating emotions. Second, the prefrontal cortex. The prefrontal cortex controls decision-making, problem-solving, focus, and impulse control. In depression, activity in the prefrontal cortex decreases significantly. Brain scans show reduced blood flow and lower metabolic activity in this region. This is why people with depression struggle to make decisions, have trouble concentrating, and feel mentally foggy. Their prefrontal cortex is literally underperforming. Third, the amygdala. The amygdala processes emotions, especially fear and anxiety. In depression, the amygdala becomes overactive. It grows larger and more reactive to negative stimuli. This is why people with depression experience heightened anxiety, constant worry, and an exaggerated response to stress. Their amygdala is stuck in overdrive, amplifying negative emotions and making it harder to feel calm or safe. Neural connections and brain function in depression. Now, let me explain what happens to the neural connections in your brain during depression. Your brain contains billions of neurons that communicate through synapses. These synapses form neural pathways that control everything from your thoughts to your emotions to your behaviors. In a healthy brain, these neural pathways are strong, flexible, and efficient. But in depression, something called synaptic pruning occurs. This means that the connections between neurons weaken and break down. 
Research from neuroscience labs in the United States and Canada shows that depression reduces the density of dendritic spines. These are tiny structures on neurons that receive signals from other neurons. When dendritic spines shrink or disappear, communication between neurons slows down. This is why depression affects memory, focus, and cognitive function. Your brain is literally losing the connections it needs to process information efficiently. But here's the good news. The brain has neuroplasticity. This means it can rewire itself and rebuild these connections. And this is exactly what happens when depression is treated effectively. The role of brain-derived neurotrophic factor, or BDNF. BDNF is a protein that supports the growth, survival, and maintenance of neurons. It's like fertilizer for your brain. It helps neurons grow, form new connections, and stay healthy. In depression, BDNF levels drop. And when BDNF levels are low, neurons can't repair themselves or form new connections. This is one reason why depression becomes chronic and why the brain struggles to recover on its own. But antidepressant medications, therapy, exercise, and lifestyle changes can all increase BDNF levels. This is how treatment helps the brain heal. It boosts BDNF, which allows neurons to regenerate and neural pathways to rebuild. Depression and the brain's reward system. Let me explain one more critical system, the brain's reward system. Your reward system is centered in a region called the nucleus accumbens. This area releases dopamine when you experience something pleasurable, like eating your favorite food, spending time with loved ones, or achieving a goal. In depression, the reward system shuts down. The nucleus accumbens becomes less responsive to positive stimuli, Dopamine release drops, and this is why people with depression lose interest in activities they used to love. This is not laziness. This is not a lack of willpower. This is a physical malfunction in the brain's reward circuitry, and it is one of the most debilitating symptoms of depression. Mental health statistics in the United States and Canada. Let me share some more statistics that highlight the mental health crisis in North America. In the United States, suicide is the second leading cause of death among people aged 10 to 34. Depression is the leading cause of disability worldwide, and it affects people of all ages, races, and socioeconomic backgrounds. In Canada, approximately one in five Canadians will experience a mental health problem in any given year. And yet only about half of those who need mental health services actually receive them. These numbers show us that depression is not rare. It is not a sign of weakness. It is a common, serious, and treatable medical condition that affects millions of people across the United States and Canada. Why understanding brain science reduces stigma. Here's why this neuroscience matters so much. When people understand that depression is a brain disorder caused by changes in brain chemistry, brain structure, and neural connections, it becomes easier to see depression as a medical condition, not a character flaw. You would never tell someone with diabetes to just think positive thoughts and their blood sugar will fix itself. The same logic applies to depression. You can't just snap out of it. Your brain chemistry is imbalanced, your brain structure has changed, your neural connections are damaged. But just like diabetes can be managed with medication, lifestyle changes, and medical care, depression can also be treated and treatment works. Treatment and hope for recovery. The most effective treatments for depression include antidepressant medications, cognitive behavioral therapy, lifestyle changes like exercise and nutrition, mindfulness and meditation practices, and social support from family, friends, and mental health professionals. Antidepressants work by increasing serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine in the brain. Therapy helps rewire negative thought patterns and rebuild healthy neural pathways. Exercise boosts BDNF and stimulates neuroplasticity, and social connection activates the brain's reward system and reduces feelings of isolation. When these treatments are combined, they create a powerful protocol for healing the brain and recovering from depression. Final thoughts, mental health matters. To summarize, depression is not just sadness. It is a complex brain disorder that affects brain chemistry, brain structure, and neural connections. Serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine levels drop, the hippocampus shrinks, the prefrontal cortex underperforms, the amygdala becomes overactive, neural connections weaken, BDNF levels fall, and the brain's reward system shuts down. 
but the brain has neuroplasticity. It can heal, it can rebuild, and with the right treatment, people with depression can recover and live full, meaningful lives. If you or someone you know is struggling with depression, please reach out for help. Mental health matters. There is hope and treatment works. In the United States, you can call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 988. In Canada, you can call the Canada Suicide Prevention Service at 1-833-456-4566. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more 3D medical animations that make complex health topics easy to understand. And remember, understanding the science behind depression helps reduce stigma and saves lives.